from what I can recall in the last five or six, seven decades, uh, three ideologies have been actively promoted and governments have been formed on the basis of these ideologies. Nazi ideology, Germany. Communist ideology, Soviet Union, China. Some kind of Islamic ideology, Iran. Ideology has come into disrepute. Erased ideology is terrible. Even in the U.S., you know, when you had the new cons, you know, for, for a number of years. Yeah, well, this is an ideology that took precedence over common sense. And we ended yes. up with a number of wars and, and destruction. And so whether, you know, it's full-fledged ideology, whether it's... But people have to be flexible. Ideologies, if they are rigid and if they are too narrowly constructed. They can become a menace to, to human beings. But ideas, yes. Ideas are absolutely crucial. Freedom. Dissent. Fight against inequality. Fight against poverty. Those are tremendous ideas. And in fact, they're very useful ideas, even for forming, say, coalitions, forming alliances. If we want in India or in Iran to, to create wonderful democratic alternatives, we will need alliances. So alliances have to be built on the basis of practical programs, of course, but also on the basis of some very broad ideas around which uh, we can build political coalitions, and in, indeed involve millions of people in our countries to, to move towards those ideas. Gandhi was a man of ideas, but he was above all a man of commitment. He had this idea of independence for India. He had the idea that Hindus and Muslims must live on terms of friendship and equality. He had this idea that the Hindu upper castes must change their attitudes toward the lower castes, the lower castes must get their rights. So these were the ideas he was committed to. And he gave his 24 hours of the day, seven days a week, 52 weeks in the year. Total commitment to these ideas. So if you want to, me to give an opinion on, on the secret of Gandhi's success, I mean, it certainly was not complete success, but it was a remarkable success. It was his total commitment to his ideas. And then he created a team and he worked with a team. So I would say in addition to the word idea and the word action, I would like to bring out the word commitment. I, I'm not sure we are short on ideas. What we are short of is, is to make sure that these ideas are, are being put to, put to practice. I mean, it's, it's easy to formulate your ideas. It's easy to be committed to your ideas. It's the most difficult mm -hmm. is to make sure that people will understand the ideas and subscribe to it. People have to see that these ideas are not coming to them you know, from the top down but are, are ideas that you, you want to share with them at their, at their level. You have to have a, a core group of people who will continue to disseminate these ideas and explain it in simple, in simple terms. And they're not difficult to understand. I mean, because you're really talking to, you're talking to people intuitive, I think, you know, part of, the, of every human being. I want you to be free. I want you to have dignity. I, I want you to understand that if we work together, we can overcome any repressive regime. I, I want to, you to understand that you can disagree, but disagree in a way that at the end, get the best out of each one of us. 
So they're not difficult ideas. The challenge is to talk to the people who have been told that this is secular, destructive, anti-religious ideas. that these are Western imported ideas that does not fit with our traditions or our lifestyle. So we have to come with an alternative. We have to reach out to them. We have to make them understand that we really have a solution. But it's a, it's a human solution. It has its own you know, faults, I'm sure, and we will Im improve as we go along. But we'll have to work it together. Democracy is a very novel concept. It's what, 100, 200 years ago. I mean, that is, you know, and we continue to continue to refine it, to improve it. I mean, the, it's work in progress. I want to echo a note of optimism. We have a lot of setbacks, but we are evolving. 50 years ago, when it was considered okay, you know, that uh, Rosa Park has to sit in the back of the bus. That was only 50, 60 years ago, in 1960. You know, look at how, if that were to happen today, if you have the Supreme Court in the US, you know, a separate but equal, you know, in terms of education, was, was considered to be constitution, uh, you know, by, by the same Supreme Court, who said later on, 20 years or so again, you know, that this is unconstitutional. What happened? The, the Constitution is exactly the same. It just our understanding of what means equality means has changed. You know, and in Brown versus the Board of Education, they they said this is not Constitution. It it, it takes effort. It takes I idea people, it takes philosophers, it takes sociologists, it takes politicians. Uh, but I think we are on the right track. It's not a linear line. No, you go up and down. But overall, if you look at it, compare with what we have 50 years ago or 100 years ago, uh, no, we are moving the right direction. It, the, the key challenge, actually, is how to speed the process. The march of humanity continue to move forward. You know, there is no question about that.